everyone. Guess what time it is? It's design time. Last week I got a phone call from a realtor and she was asking about getting one of her listings staged. Well, this home was occupied and I guess what the problem was is it wasn't showing well because of the furniture and the way that it was placed. In addition to some of the furniture not being quite up to date. So I took a look at the pictures online and sure enough, yeah, they were a bit strange. Anyway, the kind of crazy part about this job was she needed it done and it was late afternoon when she called me. She needed it done by 10.30 a.m. the next morning because she had a showing and it was a second showing and the husband who lives here had his wife fly out from California to take a look at it to see if they wanted to buy it. Now some might say, go ahead and do that second showing without staging it and if it doesn't sell, then yeah, stage it after that. Well, this woman wanted it staged, especially for that showing. So we had to work really fast to get this house looking great. And we knew it had to appeal to, you know, the wife, the woman, the boss. So we were in such a hurry that I completely forgot to take any video of the house before. But I do have pictures from online and I'm gonna go through those with you right now starting with the weirdest room in the house second weirdest weirdest uh, a craft room which should have been an office it had these blue cubbies facing out there were two shelving units on the side and the whole thing was just not visually appealing and the next room is the dining room which was not that bad it just didn't have anything to it it had table chairs and a bench. And that was something that was easy to remedy. Living slash family room. Now usually you'd be able to tell those two rooms apart because they'd be apart, but these weren't. This was one huge rectangular room with a fireplace on one side and a television on the other. And what they had done with lots of Ikea sofas is they just lined it up along the edges of those two rooms which didn't distinguish which was which or didn't even make it two rooms. So the fireplace end of this huge room was itself really beautiful. It was right by the kitchen. Nothing on the floor, just the couches and on the other side where the television is, same thing except an orange rug underneath. So we had this one living space with two focal points that we needed to divide. And lastly on that bottom floor was a spare bedroom. And it just didn't scream cozy bedroom at all. It was a metal frame with a mattress on it and some blue quilt. And we decided to take care of that because that's an easy fix. The master bedroom, that's always a really big one. There are three main areas of any home that are important to stage if you're only gonna do those, and that's the living room, the dining room, and the master bedroom and bath. Well, this bedroom, it had oak, just heavy orange, oak bed and an orange oak armoire that was just huge and the bed had beige stuff on it so nothing in that room popped. There was a lack of art all over this house. So as soon as we saw the property in person it wasn't much different than the pictures. We knew that we had a lot to do. So now we're going to go over what was actually done and I'll give you the after. There's video so video or pictures. Let's start with that craft room. The main problem with that room was that it was unbalanced. The desk was sideways and there were two leaning ladder shelves on one side. So what we ended up doing was taking that orange rug from the living room, putting it in that room, turning the desk around so there was no blue cubbies in sight and we took the two ladder shelving units and divided them on either side of the desk. There were a lot of books and knickknacks on those shelves and I took most of that out, put some plants and candles there and voila, craft room. Next we tackled the dining room because that was really simple. All we did there was I set the table and put a couple of plants in the middle and it just kind of made it feel a little bit more welcoming, a little warmer and much more inviting. All right, living room slash family room. Now that the orange rug was out of 
the left side room, which is the TV room, we had some couches to move. Now the problem with that room was just the way the couches were lined up and the fact that the TV that was once there was gone, but we had to keep a focal point in there to make a separate room. What we did there is we put a big, beautiful abstract painting where the TV should have been, moved the sofas so there was an actual designated place to sit, added a faux sheepskin rug, a glass and chrome table, and a couple of accessories here and there, and it looked great. Now, the other side had that beautiful stone fireplace to start with. And again, what was wrong with that room was the lining up of the Couches. What we did there is we took a rug from the entry, centered it in that room facing the fireplace, took the couches and divided them in half and put what was originally part of this Ikea set, made that a coffee table, put some accessories there, and a big long painting on the left, and it turned out beautifully. Oh, by the way, blue pillows. We added blue pillows. That's all it needed was a little pop of color. Now, mind you, while I'm telling you this, that this is an occupied home. So we are using stuff from the home and anything that we have to add, like the pillows or the coffee table or settings on the dining table is what we do in these cases. Now, um, the bedroom was, we couldn't do anything about that, about the furniture because that orange oak was already in there and it weighed probably a thousand pounds and she couldn't get it out of the home in time to show it the next day. So we did what we could and that was to get a nice bedding set, a set of white lamps, a painting, some pillows, and a pair of chairs in the corner. And all of this really warmed up that room and made it feel like a true master. Ooh, I forgot that little bedroom on the main floor with the blue quilt. White bedding is always best. Plain, no pattern, a little pop of color, and we added nightstands art, a set of glass blue lamps, and there you have it, a cozy guest bedroom. Anyway, when we left there, it looked like a model home, and that was using stuff that was already there and just adding little touches here and there. Tables, pillows, bedding, art, accessories, makes all the difference in the world, and moving furniture. And, do any of you want to know what happened at 10.30 the next morning when the realtor showed the wife or the boss the home? They were under contract that afternoon, and I think that staging had a lot to do with it. Staging made this house much easier to look at, and what I mean by that is buyers could come in and look at it and easily figure out which room was which, what belonged where, and ultimately imagine themselves living there. This home sold for a little bit over $1 million. And I think staging made it look worth every penny, if I do say so myself. Anyway, you guys, that's it for this video on staging an occupied home, plus other stuff. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you'll join me next time on Design Time. Bye.